now that we've talked about optionals in Rust, let's uh, spend some time and talk about also error handling in uh, this programming language. Now, error handling in Rust is quite actually straightforward. Uh, if you think about like the mainstream way of handling errors in Rust, of course, if you're not using any third party package. Now, it is very similar to working with a tuple because uh, Rust actually has an error type. So um, not only that, but it also has a result type. So um, in some programming languages, you can basically throw an exception. For instance, in Dart, you can basically throw anything. You can just say throw a string. In Python, you can do the same thing. In Rust, if you're working with errors, then basically you have to have a, an error type. So whatever you're throwing has to be of that particular error type. And also when you're, when you're working with a function, for instance, that can return either a successful result or an error, then you have to use a result type. And that result is an enumeration. And we're going to have a look at these things soon. So what we can do here, just to have a look at a very simple example of how to encompass a value inside a data type that can either contain a value or an error is by having a look at this result type. The code looks a little bit scary. I completely understand, but I'm going to explain to you how it actually works. Uh, there is a part of this code that we haven't really gone through yet, and it's the error part, which is the trait, which is we're placing it inside a box of a dynamic error. That, that, it, that part itself is quite scary, but I'll try to explain what is happening in that code. So. Uh, let's go ahead and write that piece of code in here. Actually, let's just say let value, and I'm going to say this is a result, which is either a, a string slice. So this is like by writing this code, I'm saying I have a result type which can either be a string slice or something that is an error. And something that is an error, you have to put it inside a box, which is a reference to a value in the heap. We haven't talked about that yet. Oh, wow, this is actually a great suggestion. This is pretty much what I wanted to write. So this is a dynamic SCD error. So I'm just going to fix this suggestion by GitHub Copilot a little bit in here. I'm just going to type hello, and I'm going to explain what's happening in here. So we're basically telling Rust in here that we have a result type that can either be a string slice or a reference to an error which sits in the heap. Okay, And this is STD error error, which is basically a trait if you go in here. It is a trait. We haven't talked about traits so much yet, but kind of like interface or protocol. So this is the error type and this is the actual result. But in here, we're saying that it's equal to OK of hello. Otherwise, other, otherwise you could in here basically go and say this is an error and specify the actual error. So this is this is a way in Rust that you can specify that something is either a correct value or an error. OK. So we will talk more about box in the pointer chapter. But for now, just know that this is a reference to memory in the heap. We don't have to say much more about that at the moment. Okay. So now that you have your value, which is a result type, as you can see in here, you can go ahead and actually use this result type. So let me see my parenthesis in here. Good. Uh, sorry, curly bracket. So let's go ahead and match this. So you can use match for pattern matching of a result as well, not just only optionals, for instance. So you can go ahead and say match this value. And we say in case of a, a an OK, this is a pretty good suggestion. We're saying because you know a, a result is an enumeration is um, so it can either be if you look here at the cases it can either be an OK with a, an embedded value of t in here, or it can be an error with an embedded value of error in it or e. So in here we're saying in case of OK we're unwrapping a value of value inside that and then pr printing it. In case of error, we're getting a box dynamic of error and then printing that to the screen. So if I bring up the terminal in here, and let's just clear the terminal and run our application in here, and we're pretty much getting the value of hello printed to the screen in here because we're hitting the OK uh, section of the match arm, okay, or the, the OK arm of the match uh, expression. Uh, OK. Um, as we've talked about now, adding errors in here, you can also have a result uh, that um, has a void uh, or a unit type for its error. So let's change this code in here and say value result str. And we can have instead of an, a, a box error, we can say that it doesn't have an actual error, but it, it can have an error, but it, it's void. It's basically void. Okay. And in here, we just say an error 
error occurred. Some error occurred. Okay. And we don't have to format that. So, and this error doesn't have to be unwrapped because there's pretty much nothing in here for us to unwrap. And we say error like this, or we just put underscore in there because it's a void. So this is a unit type. So we're saying that this result type is either a string slice or a or basically nothing. So the error, if if there is an error, it, that error is evaluating to nothing. Okay. And the way to actually um, specify an error of nothing is to say ERR, and then you put the unit type in here as well. Okay, so if I bring up the terminal, you should now see that says some error occurred. You would use this pattern in Rust if you if you want to indicate an error happening, but that error itself is not so valuable for the call site to know about. So you say either you get a string slice or some sort of an error, something bad happened that I'm not, not going to tell you about. So that's also a way of doing that. Um, if you want to expect at the call site a value from a result, you could do that using expect. So if if I go in here and say let unwrap is value, uh, value dot expect, and then you put your message here. I, I was expecting a username. Let's say okay, and we go in here. We say uh, create a function which is called get username. So let's say f get fn get username. And we see we say that this re returns a result of either a string slice or a, a unit type. And in here we just say it for now returns OK John. And for the value, sorry, sorry for the username, we say set uh, let a username. It gets the username, okay, like that. And you can see it results to a result of string slice and a unit type in here, okay. And then we see uh, at the end of here we can say expect. Then we say, uh, fail to get username. This is pretty good, actually. All right. And we just print it to the console, hello username. You can see the get username function at the moment is returning OK with the value of John. And remember, OK is an arm of the enum of uh, result. So you could also say ERR in here with the unit type of error. For, for here, it's just an empty error. OK. But for now, we say John. And then if we look at, oh, the SDR missing lifetime. For now, let's just say string. So to make this a little bit easier, we say to string. Uh, oops, to string. Uh, and then this is an OK. Uh, let's have a look at the terminal. You can see at the moment it says, hello, John. But if this uh, function was to return a, an error, ERR of a unit type, then the call site would be able to handle that as well. So it would just say panicked at get username okay so this is what expect does expect actually expects a value from a result and if that value doesn't exist meaning that there is an error in the result then this message will be printed to the screen when the application panics you can see in here it says fail to get username which is pretty much what we specified in the expect function itself okay now if you're expecting an error from a result which i mean in, in my experience that hasn't really happened so much to me i've had to maybe do that once or twice uh, but if you're expecting an error from a result then you can actually use expect err from uh, from your result type so you can change this and say expect err and then in here you can say i didn't expect a username okay uh, and then in here since this is already throwing an ERR, then this application is going to be fine. Okay, so uh, username. Okay, let's run the application. Okay, and this this one is basically resolving to an error type, which is which is void. So we say we can just remove this for now. Okay, and remove the assignment as well. Let's have a look at what is printing to the console. Nothing at the moment because this is actually expecting an error and this is throwing an error. But if we were if we were to return an actual value in here, we say John to string, then you would get that expectation in the panic message. So it, it, the application panics saying, I, did, I didn't expect the username printed to the screen. OK, now instead of expecting, you can also check whether a function is returning OK or an error with the uh, is OK and is error. So is OK, you can see in here. OK, and you can print this. You can say is OK and print it and let is err do the same function with is okay and is err and then print them to the screen print ln let's see if github copilot can do this for us 
and then I go to the terminal and you see the expectation of OK is printing true and expectation of uh, error is printing false simply because in here we're returning John at the moment, which is OK. And we can say we want to return an error instead. And you can see this will be flipped, basically. It will be false and true. Now, you can also do an early exit from uh, from your uh, from your call sites when you're basically um i mean this is kind of difficult to explain but if you have a function that already returns a result um and then uh, at the moment our main function isn't doing that but let's say let's say that we have a function in here which is called get full name okay which already returns a result of a string and uh, an error of unit type uh, and Let's say we have two more functions in here, get first name and get last name, okay? Get first name and get last name. Let's say the get first name actually returns an okay in here with the name of John, John and to string. Okay. And let's do the same thing for the get last name and say it returns go. Okay, and what get full name is going to do is to call both these functions and grab their values. Now, since this function already is returning a result, what it could do is to optionally grab the values of get first name and get get last name and let Rust handle the errors by returning the error from get first name or last name inside get full name should any of those actually return an error. So let me show you what I mean in here. We can say let, let first name is get first name, and then you put a question mark at the end of the invo invocation. And you can see then the result in here will be a string, meaning that you already basically have wrapped, uh, you've, you've unwrapped the value and grabbed the string from your function. Then we go in here and we say last name, and this will be get last name, it's similar to that. And then you can return a formatted first name and last name from your function. And then if you go in here and say uh, full name, you can call your function get full name in here, okay? And then you can expect a value from this. So you can match it, for instance, as well. And then we say in the case of OK, we just print it. Otherwise, we print error to the screen. So in this case, we're going to get the full name, hello, John Doe. But if any of these functions didn't actually return a proper value, so for instance, if get first name said, I actually return an error of unit type in here, you will see error being propagated all the way down in our application. So get full name calls first name and be like, oh, I didn't get a value. This actually returned a unit type of error to me. Then this function quits with an error, which then propagates to this uh, function, uh, to this result type in here, then ends up in the ERR arm of the match expression inside your main function. So this is a very handy and a very common way of actually working with results in, in Rust, so you better actually get used to that. Now, if you have a, a value inside your um, a result, so let's actually go back in here and return an actual value. If you have a value in your uh, results and, and you want to map that to something, so in here we're getting a string, let's say that in case uh, you're actually getting a string in the result, you want to map it to its length. You, there's a map function available on result which you can use. So you can say let length is full name and then you, you can say map that and we talked about strings and like um, we talked about uh, inline functions, uh, which are kind of called closure sometimes as well. So we, we should know basically how this works. So we get the string input in here, and then we're going to say string length, as you can see in here. So the implementation is very simple. Let me bring it to the next line so you see it better. You can see what I'm doing. I'm taking the full name result type. I'm mapping it with a string as a, an input, and then I'm getting the length of that string inside the uh, inside this closure. Okay, and then we can print this uh, result to the screen. But um, what's happening in here? You can see we have a result in here. Um, but let's say that you either want to get the length, or you want to say that I want to get a default value. So uh, what you could do. Uh, here we could say for instance uh, unwrap or default so what's what's then going to happen in here is it's going to turn this into a u size which is the length of the of the string but if this result was an error 
then it's going to use the default value for the length of the, uh, of the string of type u size, which is going to be zero. So you either get a zero or you actually get the length of the string. So let's put this to test and see the length at the moment. For John Doe, it's going to be eight. But if any of these functions return an error, so like this one in here, then you are going to get the value of zero printed to the console. Okay, so there's lots and lots to play with when it comes to uh, result types, just like in optionals. As you can map the, uh, as you can map the uh, an actual value inside a result, you can also map an error. So should an error happen, you can actually map it to something else. So let's go ahead in here and, for instance, return an error in here, and we say this is an error. Okay, and then. Um, we could also change these error types to be honest. We could say this is an actual string error and a string error in here and a string error in here as well. And then in case of an error, then we say, I don't know, uh, I don't know the first name, okay? Uh, okay, so let's see what happened in here. Mismatch types expected in our result string string found unit type. Uh, if we remove this, expect a string found str. Okay, because this is not a string, of course. And we say to string. Um, so now we're actually returning a valid string as, as the error. So let's remove this. And we know already that get first name is returning a, a string. Uh, so let's go in here and say let uh, error length, we could say full name and then map the error. So given an error, we know the errors are strings, then let's get the length of those errors, okay? And then we can print the error length to the screen as well. See how this looks like? And you can see the error uh, length is 27 in this case. Um, it's a result of string, let's say map the error length, and then we can take the default, unwrap or default, okay? So you can see what's happening in here where uh, oops, string e length on wrap or default error length, uh, full name map the error, string e length. It should, it should really be the length, but uh, let's see what we're actually getting in here. We're getting the result of string views. So, okay, that's fine as well. But this is, this is basically the length of the uh, error string for us. So you can see, I don't know the first name. If I typed i in here, we'll get length of one in here, you see. Okay, so using map ERR and map, you can map the error of a, of a result or you can map the actual value that is placed inside that result type. Now, one of the cool things in Rust is that you can also change the signature of your main function just like you can do in, uh, in Dart. So uh, what, what, you're, what you're gonna be able to do is if you, if you see here, at the moment, if I want to grab the get full name and actually unwrap its possible value inside my main function, I can't do that because my main function isn't returning at the moment a result. But you can change this and say that I want to return a result of a string and a string, then uh, mismatch types expect a result. Okay. And then at the end, we're just going to say uh, an okay. Full name. Okay, so the main has invalid. Oh, okay, yeah, because we can't return string in here. So let's just say uh, we at the moment return this and a box uh, of a dynamic std err and then an error, as we can see at the bottom of the screen. Okay, and then at the bottom, we just return an okay of unit type like that. So now that you've done this, now that you return basically this type of um, so what you saw earlier when, when I couldn't compile the code is that because there's a constraint on what I can actually return as a result type from main function, which is kind of understandable because this is a function that is being called kind of by the operating system. So it expects a valid type of like a signature. So you can't just return anything from this function. But this is fine. Basically, this is saying that um, either you just succeed, do your work and don't return anything, or you do uh, return an error. And in this case, we're saying, OK, we're getting the full name. And since we're now from our main function returning a result, now you can use this shorthand even in your main function in order to unwrap uh, result functions without having to manually unwrap them. Okay. 
So this is similar to what we're doing in the other function, which is called get full name, which is returning result. And that is the reason it can use this shorthand in order to unwrap uh, other results type functions. Okay. Now there's a lot more to error handling and, and there's also a lot more to optionals as we've talked in, in, in the previous chapter uh, about, but as we go uh, further into the course, we'll talk more and more about these concepts. So uh, if you want to uh, maybe go grab a cup of coffee and sit down and play a little bit with result types yourself and have a look at the various functions that are available on them. And I'll see you in the next uh, section of the video.